The other story that I can think of um, didn't start out quite so well. It was um, a, an elderly woman and her husband. Uh, she had um, a stage four pressure ulcer, which she'd had for quite some time. And she was being treated surgically and also with high intensity wound care. Um, but she was losing weight rapidly and becoming more and more frail and it was becoming more apparent to the nursing staff that she was approaching the end of life and that she would not survive this incident. But unfortunately, the nurses and the medical team didn't agree on these um, projections and the medical team were more inclined to keep treating this patient um, with invasive procedures and more surgical procedures. And I think if we'd had end of life essentials that we could have turned to back then, I think we could have resolved that issue much more quickly because we would have recognised those cues much more easily and we would have been able to communicate them to the medical staff as well. But luckily it did have a happy ending. We were able to have some intensive conversations with the medical team and the nurses and the doctors talked with the patient and her husband about the fact that end of life was approaching and the approach was changed from an, an active and at times quite distressing for this patient. Um, the approach was changed from that surgical approach to a, a more palliative care approach. And she died about um, probably two or three weeks later in hospital. She wanted to stay there, but she was able to tell us in that time period what she wanted at the end of life and we were able to provide that. So end of life essentials would have been invaluable back then and so I'm so pleased that it's available now for nurses and doctors and other health professionals to help them provide the best quality end of life care um, that they can.